This is the plaintiff, Louis Justin. He says the defendant is a bootlegger, and the guy stole a film of his and uploaded it on the internet without his permission. That's a big no-no. He's suing for $10,000 for his damages. This is the defendant, James Curry. He says he's the host of a late-night internet show about old horror movies. The plaintiff claims he has the rights to one of the ones he commented on, hasn't shown him proof, and he owes him nothing. He's accused of scaring a guy silly. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Williams is presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay. Mr. Justin, you own a company called Massacre Video? Yes, ma'am. Tell me what you do for a living. Uh, we release old horror films. We do restorations off the original negatives. Uh, we do new stuff, too, mostly low-budget films. So we work with the producers, okay. buy the rights to them legally. And, and what do you do with them? Uh, we sell them. We produce DVDs. We license them to streaming companies. So we just once we own the rights, we just exploit them for our company's gain to keep going. Okay. How long have you been doing that? I, I started when I was 17 years old. Oh, how how uh, long think, have you been uh, doing that? I don't know how old you are. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 30 years old, so I've been uh, a while. Okay, so you've been <laughs> doing long. it quite a bit of time. All right. Do you kn did you know the defendant before what we're about to talk about happened? I did not know. Okay, so what happened? I was doing my normal search of the internet for bootlegs of our films, and I came across uh, Mr. Curry's channel where he was bootlegging our film Hack o Lantern and using a ripped master from our Blu ray. And that's how we discovered that he was bootlegging the film. So, what do you do? Uh, from this, this point, I then use my tools that I have with me, which is I am able to contact YouTube and Vimeo and have the video removed via the uh, DCMA Act. Okay. And you also filed a complaint against him um, the, with DCMA. And what is DCMA? That's the Del Digital Millennium Copyright Act. It's, it works with sites like YouTube and Vimeo that as like a middle party when there is rights disputes. Okay. Mr. Curry, talk to me and tell me yes. what is it you do? Well, as you said, I have a, a, a internet show and I, I show old movies and so forth. And uh, I, I found this movie uh, and ran it. And the first I heard of a problem is when he filed a DMCA notice. Uh, in right, the but you know you didn't that, produce I, that movie. Whose movie? Whose no. movie did you think? I mean, why is that okay for you to air other people's movies? Like, why would you think? that that's all right? Well, there's no extent, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, the filed copyright has sort of expired. The producer's dead, the director's dead, the company went under, they sold the, the rights years ago. Um, so there's a, no active copyright protecting it. Uh, I didn't know that at the time. I, like many other horror hosts, worked through a, a series of lists that we share, or some of us share, and this was on it. I often preload a movie onto a, a different account on YouTube for weeks, months, some, sometimes even years before I get a chance to uh, run it, giving me the chance to have people file complaints should it be uh, uh, copyrighted or, or currently so, being used. Right, but ev okay, but what efforts do you make before you put someone else's intellectual property on the air? Um, because I think you know that you can't do that. That's not permitted. So what is your theory that the movie is so old it's no longer copyrighted? How old is the movie? It's from the 80s, right? Yeah. Yes, um, it was produced yeah, in so 1980. It's not that old that is, right? And post-1978, you don't have to go and file a piece of paper anywhere. Post-1978, everything is assumed to be copyrighted when it's not your intellectual property, right? It's not your creation. So you, yes. you said... Uh, like other horror hosts, that, uh, that's what you, you have a, uh, a, an internet show called The Creature Feature? Creature Features, yes. Right. And do you do anything to them to make them yours or you just air them on your channel? What is it you do? Oh, actually, I do quite a bit. And specifically this one, 
I found a very poor quality 360 resolution original, which I remastered myself, uh, adjusting color, sound, framing, and of course the resolution and upscaled it to 4K. Okay, but- so I, I invested a great deal of time and energy on it. Right, but Mr. Curry, it's someone else's prop. We know, you know it's not your property, right? True. But right, so time, every movie that is. you put on, if you don't have permission, yeah, but time is like 1920s. Time isn't from the 80s. I mean, you know, when, when you say, oh, when time, it becomes public domain, we're talking about really, 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 really old flicks, not something from, you know, 30 years ago. Correct. Right, so you know that what you're, you're just banking, uh, it's just a cost of doing business for you. You're banking on not getting caught, but which, you know, okay. But then when the guy calls you and says, or, 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 or emails you and says, stop this, how is it that you're jabbering back at him like proof to me you own it? As I point out, uh, I have regularly had people contact me and say, oh, I, I own the rights of that. And I ask, okay, cite your source. None of them have ever done that because almost all of these people are people that, you know, they don't own the rights or they have no contract. They have nothing. They're just people. Why would they care if the people didn't own the rights? Why would they call you and tell you to stop airing it? They don't care. Like if they didn't own the rights, people they wouldn't bored. even call you. I mean, people get well, I mean, bored. Internet wow. Trolls and okay. so forth. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So talk to me about Massacre Video and how it owns the rights to uh, what's the name of it? Hack a lantern? Hack a lantern. What's Hack a lantern, Hack -a -lantern about? Lantern. Tell me what Hack a Lantern Oh, Hack a Lantern is a doozy. It is a film that is Indian produced. It was made for the American markets. And it was meant to kind of go off Halloween and the successes of that. So they made their own basically low budget film. And it was the producer who is very much alive, Rajesh Mathrota's first feature. And he produced it here. So it, it's just a story right. of this, fact, a satanic family around based around Halloween. It's a very just goofy B horror film. Okay, and um, is, when you say he's very much alive, is he available there to testify? I believe you said he was there as a witness for you. Yes, yes, he is here to testify. May I speak to him to see how alive he is? Ab absolutely. Hello. Hello, yeah. sir. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah, I, I, I'm the producer of the film and owner of the film, and I sold it to. Massacre video, and this guy claims that he owns the copyright or whatever. I don't know. Oh, but he doesn't even claim that. It's worse than that. He just says, you prove you own it or I'm not going to stop violating copyright law. So you, when you say you're the producer and owner, did you or didn't you sell the rights to the plaintiff, to Mr. Yes, Justin? Yes, I did. Okay. And how long ago did you sell them? What, two, three years ago. And is it forever or just for a limited period of time? It's forever, provided I get okay. my payments. <laughs> provided you get your payments. Well, I'm sure he'd like to get paid, but it's hard for him to get paid if someone's putting it on for free. You sell this on Amazon for how much, Mr. Justin? We, it goes through our distributor, so we're getting a wholesale price from our distributor, but I believe the retail on Amazon is $29.99 for a physical copy, and it is actually being streamed legitimately uh, on Amazon Prime as well, if you have a Shutter account, which is a subsidiary of AMC, so we have studios oh, licensing yeah. it from us. Okay, and um, did you ever talk to Mr. Curry? We, I did not personally talk to him. I had a colleague of mine call him before we filed the suit, just do attempts to solidify it over and just let him know we do own it. And unfortunately, per Vimeo's rules, once he filed a counterclaim against us, we were forced to take him to court to get the video shut down. They would not be the middleman. So I called him just so we wouldn't have to go there. And he was very, just showed his blatant disunderstanding of copyright law and was very arrogant to us. What, and what did he then say? Demanding what did he paperwork. say to you? Well, in our first email with them, I told him that we did indeed own the rights to this. And Mr. Curry stated, you may own the rights, but there is no copyright for it. So you can't stop anyone from using it. Showing even if I showed uh, him the paperwork, he is not going to stop. All right. Did you do any research online or anything to see if they were registered, if the film was registered? Mr. Curry? Uh, at that time, before that, no, I hadn't. As, as I said, I was working when on the list. Right. Well, when did you do that? Right. Well, after the gentleman that? called. Uh, and then what? What did you find? Well, I found that there, was a, that there is a copyright, as I said, 
for a company that doesn't exist anymore. While and, and my lawyer, as we pointed out, uh, said, you know, this, I, I'm not wearing the white hat here. I'm not wearing the black hat. It's a gray hat because an error was made. Now, oh, I don't think you're wearing a gray hat at all. What er, when you say error, an error was made by who? Well, by me in this one, yes. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I understand what you're saying. Here's a rights assignment. And of course, we had direct testimony from the producer. Yes. Um, but your channel, Mr. Curry, um, how were you even able to get the name The Creature Feature Show? Or I guess there's a lot of Creature Fe- The Creature. Fe- I remember watching something called The Creature Feature Show. Yes. I mean, uh, I was uh, actually back in 2008. Oh, I should say back in the 70s, 70s in San Francisco, there was a Creature Feature Show with Bob Wilkins. And uh, the director was Tom Warsh, and he knew an associate of mine. And in 2008, they came out with a retrospective about the original host, Bob Wilkins. And he asked the associate of mine and I to bring the show back to raise interest in his movies. So we did that, and we've been doing, I've been doing this ever since. Um, and I saw that there was some litigation over the name The Creature Feature. Tell me about that. Uh, I, I had the name, I've been using the name Creature Features uh, in good faith. And then a couple of years ago, you went out and you trademarked the name because they hadn't thought about trademarking it or the, there was no well, trademark. It had expired it. from the original show or what? Oh, as so I you kind of get the idea more. about rights and violating rights and having rights. I think you get it, right? Oh, I, I get it and all. But I, I would take yeah. umbrage with the argument that I, I was somehow aggressive or uh, a, a problem here. I was actually quite polite to the gentleman. And as I point out, lots of people say things. It, it doesn't mean anything. As, as my lawyer once said, you can say anything you want until you get in front of the judge. Then it's got to be the truth. Uh, so shows like mine are always starving for content. So we're always happy to talk. Yeah, because you don't own any. Cause, and, right. But that's a problem. You're, you're, you're starving for content because you don't own any. Now, Mr. Um, Justin, what is it you're asking I'm, for here I'm today? Asked- I was asking for $10,000 in damages. It has damaged the thing and just the time we've had to spend on this case because it should have went away after the very first complaint. It's the, the fact we had to take it to court was the, I think, fourth step already. Like There were three steps that got us here already. So. You need an order, though, that says that a court of law heard it and found in your favor in order to keep it off of those other sites, yes, ma'am. correct? Yes, yes, ma'am. Right. This was something we were not wanting to do at all. We tried to not have. Yeah, it shouldn't have gotten this, this far. It shouldn't yeah, have gotten this I far. I am finding agree. in your favor, not in the amount of 10000 because you can't really show me damages in 10000 can you? It's not like you can show me a decrease in sales or or whatever. But um, I'm uh, Mr. Curry. I, I don't I don't agree that this is gray. I think this is extremely black and white. I I think that this ended up causing him a great deal of heartache. And if you have a lawyer who you consult with, perhaps you should consult with him on what the definition of public domain is, because this is not it. Okay, and perhaps you already have and you know that only full and well. I am uh, ordering a verdict in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $2,500. That's my judgment. Thank you, Judge. So the plaintiff gets $2,500, not $10,000, Mr. Curry, the defendant. You know, you got caught this time, and it's costing you. What, what are you thinking right now? Well, as I said, I, I was working for my list, and uh, an error was made. And uh, this happens from time to time, and you take it in stride, and you move forward, and you try to do a better job. It's, it's not like there's a, a, a guide on how to go around doing this. Well, hopefully in the future, you'll be more careful. Really, no kidding. All right, Mr. Justin, you were you were seeking $10,000. You didn't quite get that, but uh, you, you are victorious. So how do you feel now? I feel great. Mr. Curry was aware of what he was doing. After we served him the documents, his YouTube channel went from 70 videos down to four. He, he knows what he's doing. So I'm very happy with the judge's decision. All righty. Well, good for you. Congratulations. All right. You, let's sir. join the judges now for another session of After the Verdict. Certainly in this case, um, plaintiff was entitled to be compensated. Aren't you dying to see this horror flick? I, I, I just don't remember a lot of Oscar buzz back in 1988 <laughs> on, on Hackle. Yeah, Ranking. but there's nothing right? there's nothing better than B-horror movies. Uh, That's, I yeah. love it. No, I love them too. Are yeah. you kidding me? I, I'm a sucker for a good, scary movie. Love them. Yeah. But yeah, Hackle Lantern was not one that, uh, that I ended up seeing. 
I think the defendant knows full well and good what it is that he was doing, it and that it's way. not gray in the slightest. And he was kind of arrogant in um, in the correspondence. And, and if you're if you're in the shoes of a guy like this plaintiff, you have to be eternally vigilant and constantly looking around and checking to see who's using your stuff. Right. Right, that's got to be no way to live. I hope he makes a good living doing this. It's a kind of a really cool job. I mean, uh, I guess what he needs to do is register his copyright. He does. I don't. It's just a form. It's not that difficult. Right. And then he and then he can go into federal court and, right. and slam people and get attorneys' fees and get attorneys' and, and fees and greater money and, yeah. damages, etc. Yeah. So Terry wants to know this. Hey Harvey, my gym refuses to refund payments when they were closed for COVID, and my credit card company is siding with them. Can I sue in small claims court? Look, this is an open question. The appellate courts have not decided this yet, and it's going to be decided on a state-by-state -state basis. Uh, I think it's close, and my gut is that the gym would probably win the lawsuit, but I'm not confident the gym would. I think it is an open question. You could try it. Going to small claims is not that hard to do, but I wouldn't spend the money before the judge rules.